Hi everyone, my name is Josh Penfold and I am the founder of Goose. So today we're gonna to talk about why we chose Strapi, uh, the development process, and some of the integrations and operations that we used uh, throughout our uh, development, our, our design specking. Our project is called mcquays.com and goosedirect.com. Both are using the same Strapi engine. One is targeted towards the wholesale uh, B2B retail trade and McQuay's is targeted towards the industrial B2B trade. What we're able to build with Strapi is we integrated a full CRM, checkout, orders, invoices, uh, and shipments, included partial invoicing. Everything you see there is built off Strapi 100%, except for live chat. We did have to use a separate server to handle the GraphQL subscription parts. What most people don't realize when we tell them we built this is that Strapi we used was almost 100% native. We added some custom uh, controllers on there for some security or on some of the GraphQL, but otherwise it's pretty stock, which we're able to do some pretty cool things by keeping it stock as well. So here's a couple screenshots of our two websites. We actually have a uh, two websites running on the, the front end for buyers and sellers to view the products and the content. And we also have a couple user portals. We have a vendor portal, an admin portal, and a buyer side portal all running off Strapi. Why did we choose Strapi? So what we did was looking beyond Strapi as a CMS, we really first looked at it as a versatile system where you can build upon multiple data models. So we were able to take Strapi and with all the different uh, relational capabilities, the content collection capabilities, and all those uh, backend simplicities and to really build out our app on top of that. So normally you think of a CMS as just handling articles, some content, some blog content. We look really past what Strapi is and the uh, API layer it gives you in relation to the database is you can really build it with like a low code solution and build almost any type of application out there. Um, I taught myself some basic uh, Node and JavaScript uh, to use Strapi. Uh, I had a little bit of a PhD background in the past, a little front-end development, but I was really able to uh, pick it up really quickly with uh, a very basic uh, tech background. We looked at this project and we got a lot of quotes for some development agencies. Some of these quotes were going between three hundred dollars to $400,000 to build a very simplistic B2B uh, marketplace application from scratch or on top of Magento or OpenCart, one of those things. And with Strapi, we did a lot of it internally and used some outside development and we were able to build this out for under $50,000 to get the beta, which I think is phenomenal that we're able to use a content solution like this, repurpose it for uh, an application engine, and really build out all the functionality that we needed. And because of the simplicity of it, we were able to quickly, quickly uh, adapt our data models and uh, add fields and content without having to go too deep through the architect a lot of the functionality. So what were our requirements when we started looking at Strapi? manage data, uh, have a robust relational capabilities, and really quickly adjust and build a data model and make it scalable for multiple content types or product types of works. Of course, cost effective with our limited budget and uh, a graphic intensive UX. Strapi kind of just kind of hit everything perfectly. I think what's really great about Strapi is there is an amazing community out there uh, of people supporting it. I almost compare that to Magento when it first started out with all the developers really trying to get in there and give back to the community. And I got a lot of help and support, not only from some of the Strapi tech people, but from the community as well. So I want to talk a little bit about the development and deployment for Strapi, what we used in our system. First off, we had really a complex data. And because of Strapi, it turned that complex data into a really simple build process. So if you look at the specs here, it's kind of a really big application. And we kind of needed that in order to provide the functionality we needed for the customers to be able to, one, find a new supplier on the site connect with them, send over business applications, get approvals back. Once those approvals come back to have automatic price lists assigned for either one or many customers, give access to the product lists and catalogs, and then assign the products with items and variants and be able to check those out with a multiple vendor cart situation and then create the orders. So one bulk order on for a customer can be converted into 10 separate orders for each supplier out there, having their, each individual order, and then being able to capture payment, shipping information that works. So as you can see, that gets really complex really quickly. 
so right now our uh, system is running on a Postgres database for simplicity. Uh, we're hosting this on Google Cloud, the Cloud Run. We have a total of 53 collections, and a typical collection has 77 fields and 17 relations, for example, on the company, which is the main object. So think about that scale with 53 collections and an average of 77 fields each. That's a lot of data points. So imagine trying to create that manually with API uh, management alone. It becomes a very, very large project um, for a team, let alone a very small team. So I don't think we could do this without Strapi, being able to manage those APIs really quickly and simply. Uh, we built no custom plugins. And again, I mentioned before, we did build a custom middleware on the GraphQL side just because we wanted to prevent some deep querying and control some whitelisting of the fields. We didn't want things on a company, for example, like a payment token or vendor IDs to be really available on the API. So we're able to create some field level permissions via a very basic middleware, which is able to segment the GraphQL based on three different types of user role we created uh, just for the API manager side. Um, we have user-based carts, so via a, uh, API token on the front end is able to really keep track of each individual customer's cart. So each company in our system could have multiple users and each user can have their own cart saved and be able to have that be persistent once they log it off. And again, we did build live chat as well with um, integrations between the buyer and the sellers real time with GraphQL subscriptions. Again, that's the one part we did not use uh, Strapi for just because the GraphQL subscriptions was a little bit more challenging building into Strapi. So we built into an open source uh, package backend. So we look at this here, this is a sample data model of what we use in Strapi. So what this is, is an example of the complexity we had on the compilation to really keep track of all the data and provide the resources we need to have a full-fledged B2B e-commerce marketplace. So you see here, we have things like company name, email, basic stuff, city, state, all the things you would truly need for a business to business marketplace. And as you can see here, we have things in relations with uh, channel access or tag system. Tags are a way for us to add tags onto an, an object and do sorting and uh, content building by tag as opposed to manual selection. For example, on a product, we could tag a product with fall 2020 or, or fall 2022 and then build an assortment and say, okay, just connect any product that has that fall 22 tag and have it related automatically to the assortment and we can build that logic on the front end to really drive the, the, the collection creating and the relations. Uh, we have information here on our, our balance. Uh, we use a company called Balance, uh, which was really, really great for our B2B payments. And we're able to integrate really easily into Strapi to handle things like uh, credit card transactions, net 60 terms, even check payment. So it was a really great solution they have over at, at Balance B2B. Okay, so I know there's probably some tech people here. So I'll go in a little nitty gritty on how we deployed this in integrations. So we are hosted on Cloud Run with the Postgres DB for the Strapi instance. And our front end is on App Engine with Nuxt. And we have Vue on uh, Cloudflare uh, static pages. Um, everything is stored in GitHub. So we very easily can push up changes to our dev or production servers based on GitHub. Uh, we're using Algolia for our search. So it goes really well for both sites to be able to index into Strapi. And... Uh, to find the uh, and make it easy for the customers to really find the suppliers or products we're working for. So we're able to segment out by company type, by category, and the uh, open source integrations out there that have been created by the community for Algolia has been really great to make things really simple to get that up and running. And Algolia has some really great pricing plans for small companies, and it's worked out really well. I, we can't be happier. We also have an SMTP server in order to help out with the email sending. So whenever a new user signs up, whenever some new order comes in or tracking information, we just send an MT SMTP request out to a third-party provider. I think we're using SendGrid and then get that out there. And again, uh, I can't uh, mention these guys enough. Balance, B2B, uh, their payment layer has been really great helping us integrate into Strapi. Uh, and they were able to uh, allow us to do things like having each uh, vendor owning every transaction. If five... Uh, uh, vendors were in your order, then each vendor would have a separate transaction on that order segmented out, and they could capture and uh, invoice that separately off the one payment token, which we thought was really great. That's our Strapi project. Thanks, guys. <music>